Hey, what's up, everybody? Crypto Coding here, and I'm back after one month of waiting. Finally, it's time to make some videos, and thank you guys so much for 906 subscribers. You guys are insane. So, first of all, what we will learn today. So, if you watch this video till end, you'll find how to do this. So, we have our tiny little character right over here to move, and if I hit space, as you can see, you have the goddamn, uh, sword you can add much more stuff to it as you like but we'll just just gonna be focusing on the basics of everything how we do so first uh, we need to make sure that everything is all right first of all we need to uh, actually code the scene sorry about that first of all we need to actually create the scene then we need to implement it there's two parts of this tutorial first we will create the suit scene okay no you will be not we're gonna be waiting for one month for another one another like videos or something like that another episodes you will not be waiting that i'm back okay we will be a continuous schedule and there's a lot of stuff to do right now because the inventory is still there and i'm not uploading a lot of stuff okay so without further ado let's get started first we need to create a scene so first as you can see i created a folder called tax in the tax folder i have some things now you can you can download this thing in the description make sure it's a png uh it's a sword png so what i did was was create a new scene and then well, what i did uh i created i think a custom node yeah, custom node. I f actually forgot because I'm just a huge. My memory memory sucks. Okay, so we just create the area 2D node and then we add sprite to it. Also, yeah, um, yeah, we add a collision ship and we need to give a collision ship a body. But before that, let's go add that thing add our image here where is our image where is our image because I freaking put that thing in the normal map how it will pop up put that thing there as you can see it's huge oh my god look how huge this thing is so first just get a shape done then we'll talk about how you guys can like shrink that so we'll just go for a what a rectangle shape then just gonna drag and drop this and that to perfectly align it hold everything down click on this little tool right over here and then shrink it down like a crazy oh my god how do I shrink control uh, I actually forgot how to shrink damn it okay uh, how am I gonna shrink that's a question so Uh, how am I gonna really shrink? I think I'm holding shift. What about if I hold shift? Oh, there you go. Forgot. See, I'm a, how forgotful I am. Just hold shift, okay? So, just do this right now like that. And we have our thing done. Everything is fine. So, we're just gonna save. But before that, we need to just rename this. Do it sword of course so since I I have one sword already done so we're just gonna name this everything uppercase so sword right I'm not gonna be using this scene right now but uh, yeah for demonstration purpose and all that. then just save it wherever, wherever you want but I recommend you create a new folder contact because there will be I think this is the last attack but whatever just do whatever you want just gonna place this in the as you can see I have one just gonna place this in the tax folder. Just gonna hit save. Oh my god. So so two. Save. Okay, so we have our scene set up. So after that we need to animate it. Okay. So let's add an animation player. So it can be a little bit tricky to animate, but we'll be just not gonna be doing anything. Not a swing, not a thing, just like in plain old Zelda games well what we had is just like uh, what just a sword pop up after a second it got disappeared that's basically it what we'll do okay. just going to create a new animation so as you can see the animation panel will pop up for the just let me do that okay so animation panel will pop up so let's create animation 
new and we'll name this so for now let's go for um uh this is a down animation or yeah okay down so everything will be uppercase or whatever you want uh we can say sword down or something like that i'm not gonna be using this any anyways so there's multiple ways to animate but we'll be actually using what's uh known as a, a property so our property will be a rotation in angle okay so first you need to as you can see we, our thing is now down our sword is now in the down face so we'll click on add property to sprite go down and find rotation degrees click on that right click insert key and after that it will be automatically assigned so f uh for now now you will not be understanding why the value is zero i will explain more uh so first of all let me rotate this first let's create an animation new lol animation new so uh let's go for right and then click on app add track property track so sprite damn it okay just gonna find where is it there you go rotation degrees then rotate your sprite to the right direction so let's go for it damn it click on this tool easy hold down control and it will be snapping so I'll do that and make sure to add another position we'll explain that later but for now on we'll just go for this way so we will go ahead and right click insert new we'll just pop in this way as you can see it's automatically set as you can see it's not 89.9 it's actually 90 okay so fine 89.9 is .9 same now go ahead and adjust your thing adjust your oh damn it that adjust your thing as you like but for now on okay now go save right done so let's go for other ones so let's go for now this is how you animate so this is the one i'm gonna be uh, explaining you you just do this for uh, left and up direction it will be a lot better practice than yours after you do everything you will have some things now we need to do it just offsets this because look uh, the the sprite is here but our player will not be here our player can have uh, this sprite can pop out this way and our player can pop out this way so it can be a mess so make sure to offset your angle offset your position make sure you do that so to offset the angle it will be much more easier for you so <clears throat> take the sprite and move damn it come on take the sprite and then move it a little bit this way so when the uh, player got like instantiated or the or the sword got instantiated we are not like messing up a anything we are just staying there so if you don't do this i recommend you do this but if you don't do this you can have like some weird problems so make sure you offset your path okay offset your path i mean position so let's first do this so as you can see a little bit further away because our player will be here we need to a little bit further away so it looks much more good so go to the where <laughs> okay go to this transform and we have the position we'll just say click and create so make sure you just like the position is the equals to this position so save and same for the down same for the down if you just hold the scale you can see it automatically snaps now if you do this look our sword is here but our player will be here it will be really odd so that's why we need to mess up our not mess up use our position uh, keyframe so that that's what, what we wanted to explain so drag and drop this a little bit like that and click on the position key and click on the collision shape 
drag it around, drag it around, come on, god damn it, there you go, save, okay, and then drag your position key angle here, do, do this for up and left, it will be easier for you, I promise. Now, if we mess up, like it have some quirky problems when we actually write the code, don't worry, you can change that later on. Just just do a draft or draft, what I say. Then we will move on to the next section. So this is the second section right now. So let's go and code our thing. So I already coded that, just, just like usual. We'll go up, we'll have some variables. Oh, let me zoom in here. First of all, we we need the scene. Of course, we need the scene. So first of all, I need to make sure I clear the logic. The logic is at a particular. So first, we our what our player is in the right direction. When we hit space, a sword will pop out in the right direction, and after some time, it will disappear. Okay, that's basically the logic. So if you can code based on this law logic then fine just skip this video and give it a try i recommend you pause this video right now and give it a try and if you fail come back and see the answer it will be much more easier for you to understand what is going on okay first we need some variables so i give you give you a time for now why i'm messing up so much come on damn it okay whatever so we have a sword itself variable called preload we're preloading the swords in okay it's in the tax panel and we have a sword item which is set to null this is our main item okay the item itself but the sword is when we it's basically sword scene okay so this is sword scene it shouldn't be like sword itself it should be sword scene or whatever and then we have a timer we can edit the timer in the inspector view we go down and we have in the process function we have attack that's where the magic happens see it control it doesn't work mm. so this is our attack so if you get familiar with how the math statement works and if statement works it is pretty damn easy to understand what is going on here first is the if we hit the you accept you accept is the key for space enter and some other stuff so if i go to project project settings and go to input map you will accept is enter kp enter i don't know what the heck that is space and device zero for the button you can bind any keys if you want but i'm not going to do that so now we we need to make sure that when we are in the pause stage we i mean we are in the idle stage we move so we are matching with the idle remember those uh, that, that that variable idle that we used to determine that which direction is our player is in right so and then depending on the which direction we played the animation yeah that variable right there if you didn't got it go watch my previous video okay so <clears throat> now as you can see we're giving it a value yay so we're saying we have a new sword item because that <laughs> because this thing is weird okay this is for just gonna show the uh, compiler hey there is something so if I explain this it will take a lot of time because it's a little bit complicated but for now just write it this thing we need to instance this variable okay so we have a sword item you say instance then we need to specify the position where the heck that position will be the that position will be get node the sprite global position so whatever the sprite is so what do you mean by sprite it means this one this sprite itself so sprites global position wherever uh, the sprite is in the game view then we need to say get node animation player play the right because we are in the right we play the right animation then we have a <clears throat> we have some checks going on now what is this it's because if we we don't need any duplicate so if you have a duplicate uh, sword item it will automatically return there is no need to run this script right if there is a duplicate item we just remove it and there's a chance of duplicate items okay so if there is just return this we don't want that so what we are doing is saying get the children of 
uh, I don't know why I said G, but I, I don't care. So, <laughs> get parent, get children, and if it has sold item, then just return because we have a duplicate right there. So after if it's if it's not returning, it will output this. So get parent, get child, and sold item. So we actually add that item to our notary. After that, we need to start a goddamn timer. So as you can see, we instantiate the sword. Now what you need to do is add a goddamn timer. So as you can see, we have a yield command. Now this is the new command you learn. Let's go search help and search for yield or like yeet. So yield, it means there's a little bit of complicated things going on. Stops the function, stops the function execution and returns the current suspended state to a building calling function. Simply pausing, okay? No need to worry about what the heck it does but it's just simply pausing. So as you can see, we create grid tree, we create a timer of 0.2 seconds. So you can change this to a timer variable, which I should, which I didn't because I'm an idiot. So uh, get tree, create a timer, and we say timeout. So there's multiple functions there. See, if I hit this, I don't know how I'm gonna see this functions, but there's one called time, timeout. So what this special keyword does, it runs the script after when the timer is over, we run the script. Then after that, what? We need to just query free. That's basically it. Copy this line, line of code one, two, three, four times and change this up to idle up to down to down and up, up, down, down, whatever. I don't care. This is how it works. I don't know, need this. So this is basically the, how it works, okay? Simple logic, step by step how to do it. So if you find out the answer of this problem at your own pace, good job. If you did, did it, didn't, just watch this video till the end, dang it. Okay, I'm done, okay? See you later. At the next video, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but leave your suggestions below. Thank you.